The pentose phosphate pathway is a very important biochemical process that takes place inside the cytoplasm of our cells. Now, this process is important for two different reasons. Number one is the pentose phosphate pathway gives us a way to actually generate 5-carbon pentose sugar molecules and we use these pentose sugar molecules to basically generate, generate biological molecules such as DNA molecules, RNA molecules, ATP molecules, NADH and FAD molecules. It also gives us a way to generate coenzyme A. On top of that, the second reason why the pentose phosphate pathway is important is because it gives us a way to generate reducing agent molecules, molecules we call NADPH, which stands for the reduced version of nicotine, nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. Now, this molecule is used in biosynthetic processes such as the building of fatty acids, the building of cholesterol molecules, the building of nucleotide molecules, and so forth. We also use the NADPH molecules in different detoxification processes that take place inside our cells. So, in this lecture, I'd like to focus on the first phase of the pentose phosphate pathway. And recall that the first phase of this pentose phosphate pathway is the oxidative phase. This is where we actually oxidize glucose. We transform it into a pentose molecule, as we'll see in just a moment. In the process, we release a carbon dioxide and we generate the much needed reducing agent molecules, the NADPH molecule. So, the first phase of the pentose phosphate pathway is the oxidative breakdown of glucose to release carbon dioxide and generate NADPH molecules. So, let's see exactly how this takes place. So, essentially, we can break down the first phase into four steps. And let's begin with reaction one, step one. So in the first step, the enzyme that catalyzes the first step is known as glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase. Why? Well, because the substrate molecule is a glucose 6-phosphate, and this is actually a dehydrogenase reaction. So what happens is we have this NADP plus molecule that will act as an electron acceptor. So we essentially extract two electrons from this particular glucose 6-phosphate and those two electrons are picked up by this molecule. In addition, an H ion is picked up by this molecule as well and we generate the reduced version of nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. We also release the H plus ion and we produce the 6-phosphogluconol delta lactone molecule. So, this is essentially an ester bond that we form and so this is known as an intramolecular ester molecule and this bond here will be broken in step two as we'll see in just a moment so the important part of this step is we generate the much needed reducing agent molecule this molecule here we also form the ester bond here that will be broken down in step two so the oxidative phase begins with the dehydrogenation of the glucose 6-phosphate at the first carbon. So dehydrogenation simply means we're removing H ions. So an enzyme called glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase catalyzes the transfer of a hydride ion, so that's an H plus ion and two electrons, from the glucose and onto the N uh, the NAD plus carrier molecule. So this is the electron acceptor that picks up two electrons and that H plus ion. And we also release a hydrogen ion. So we form this intramolecular ester molecule known as 6-phosphogluconone delta, -lact delta lactone. Now let's move on to step two. So in step two, what we want to basically do is we want to prepare the molecule for a decarboxylation reaction. And the way that we prepare the molecule is by opening up the ring structure. We open up that ring structure via a hydrolysis reaction, which is catalyzed by an enzyme known as lactinase. So lactinase catalyzes the hydrolysis of this ester bond. And so we transform the 6 delta lactone into a 6-phosphogluconate molecule. We also release the H plus ion as shown here. 
So once we open up this molecule, it's now ready to undergo a decarboxylation reaction. Now, along with releasing the carbon dioxide in step three, we also actually oxidize this, the six phosphoglucanate. And the molecule that picks up those electrons is once again the NAD plus molecule, NADP plus molecule. This is the oxidized version of nicotine amide adenine dinucleotide phosphate. So essentially, we remove carbon one along with these two oxygens. So we form the carbon dioxide. In the process, we extract two electrons from the sugar molecule, place them onto this molecule. In addition, we take an H plus I and place it onto this, and we form the ribulose 5-phosphate molecule as well as another NADPH molecule. So the net amount of NADPH molecules that are formed when one glucose 6-phosphate undergoes the first phase of the pentose phosphate pathway is two. One is formed in step one, and the other one is formed in step three. So we have an enzyme called 6-phosphogluconate dehydrogenase. Again, it's a dehydrogenase because we're essentially extracting the 2H plus ions along with those two electrons, which are picked up by this electron carrier molecule. So this enzyme catalyzes the oxidative decarboxylation. So oxidative means we have an oxidation reduction reaction going on where this is oxidized and this is reduced. And we also have a decarboxylation reaction taking place where this carbon number one along with these two oxygen atoms are essentially removed. And so we form this ribulose 5-phosphate molecule. So we kick off a carbon dioxide molecule, we form a pentose sugar, a five carbon sugar. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons here, while we have only one, two, three, four, five carbons here. And we also form that reducing agent molecule that can be used by the cell in a variety of different ways. Now, once we form the, uh, the ribulus 5-phosphate, we have the final reaction taking place that is really an isomerization reaction in which we have the enzyme phosphopentose isomerase basically transforms this ketose ribulase 5-phosphate into an aldose, the D-ribose 5-phosphate. So the D-ribulose 5-phosphate is transformed to the D-ribose 5-phosphate via the activity of phosphopentose isomerase. So we see that in the first phase of the pentose phosphate pathway, we basically have four steps. In step one, we undergo an oxidative uh, reaction, an oxidation reduction reaction in which we generate that first NADPH molecule. In the second step, we open up this molecule to basically prepare it for step three. Because in step three, we want to generate yet another NADPH molecule as well as release that carbon dioxide to generate a pentose sugar. And the final step, we transform the ribulose 5-phosphate into its isomer form, the ribose 5-phosphate, which can then be used in the second phase of pentose phosphate pathway, the non-oxidative phase that we're going to focus on in the next several lectures.